Purgatory Explained, Part 2, Chapter 44 Motives and Incentives to Devotion Toward the Holy Souls, St. John of God We have just seen how holy and meritorious charity toward the holy souls is before God. It remains to show how salutary, at the same time, it is for ourselves. If the excellence of the work in itself is so powerful an incentive, the ad pre precious advantage which we derive from it are no less a stimulus. They consist, on the one hand, of the graces which we received in recompense for our generosity, and on the other, of the Christian fervor with which this good work inspires us. Blessed, said our Savior, are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. Blessed is he, says the Holy Ghost, that understands this concerning the needy and the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the evil day. Psalm 40. As long as you did it to one of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Matthew 25, 40. The Lord deal mercifully with you as you have dealt with the dead. Ruth 1, 8. These different, different sentences express in their strongest sense charity towards the departed. All that we offer to God in charity to the dead, said St. Ambrose in his Book of Offices, is changed into merit for ourselves, and we shall find it after our death increased a hundredfold. We can say that the spirit of the Church, the sentiments of the doctors and the saints, are expressed in these words. What you do for the dead you do in a most excellent manner for yourself. The reason of this is that this work of mercy will be returned to you increased a hundredfold in the day when you yourself shall be in distress. We may here apply the celebrated words of St. John of God when he asked the inhabitants of Granada to give him an alms for the love of themselves. To provide for the needs of the sick, whom he took into his hospital, the charitable saint traversed the streets of Granada, crying, Give alms, my brethren, give alms for the love of yourselves. People were astonished at this new form of expression, because they had always been accustomed to hear, Alms for the love of God. Why, said they to the saint, do you ask us to give alms for the love of ourselves? Because, he replied, it is the great means of redeeming your sins, according to the words of the prophet, of the prophet, redeem thou thy sins with alms, and thy iniquities with works of mercy to the poor. Daniel 4.24 In giving alms, you labor in your own interest, since you thereby diminish the terrible chastisements which your shins have merited. But we must we not conclude that all this is true of alms bestowed upon the souls of purgatory? To assist them is to preserve ourselves from those terrible expiations which we shall not otherwise escape. We may, therefore, cry with St. John of God, Give them the alms of your suffrages. Assist them for the love of yourself. Generosity toward the departed is always repaid. It finds its recompense in all kinds of graces, the source of which is the gratitude of the holy souls and that of our Lord, who considers as done to himself all that we can do for the suffering souls. 
St. Bridget declares in her revelations, and her testimony is quoted by Benedict the Twelfth, Sermon 412, that she heard a voice from the depths of the purgatorial flames pronouncing these words, May those be blessed, may those be rewarded who relieve us in these pains. And on another occasion, O Lord God, show thy almighty power in recompensing a hundredfold those who assist us by their suffrages, and make the rays of the divine light to shine upon us. In another vision, the saint heard the voice of an angel saying, Blessed be upon earth those who, by their prayers and good works, come to the assistance of the poor suffering souls. Blessed Peter Lefevre of the Company of Jesus, so well known for his devotion toward the holy angels, had also a special devotion toward the souls in purgatory. Those souls, he said, have bowels of charity, which are ever open to those who still walk amidst the dangers of this life. They are filled with gratitude toward those who assist them. They can pray for us and offer up their torments to God on our behalf. It is a most excellent practice to invoke the souls in purgatory, that we may obtain from God through their intercession a true knowledge of our sins and a perfect contrition for them, fervor in the exercise of good works, care to produce worthy fruits of penance, and in general all virtues, the absence of which has been the cause of their terrible chastisement. Purgatory Explained Part 2, Chapter 45 Advantages of Devotion Toward the Holy Souls Their Gratitude Is it difficult to understand the gratitude of the holy souls? If you had ransomed a captive from the galling yoke of slavery, would he be grateful for such a benefit? When the Emperor Charles V took possession of the city of Tunis, he restored to liberty 20,000 Christian slaves, who before his victory had been reduced to a most deplorable condition. Penetrated with gratitude toward their benefactor, they surrounded him, blessing him and singing his praises. If you gave health to a person dangerously sick, fortune to an unhappy creature who had been reduced to poverty, would you not receive in return their gratitude and their benedictions? And those souls, so holy and so good, Will they conduct themselves differently with regard to their benefactors, those poor souls who, whose captivity, poverty, suffering, and necessity far surpass all captivity, indignance, or malady to be found upon earth? They come especially at the hour of death to protect them, to accompany and introduce them into the happy abode of their eternal rests. <clears throat> we have already spoken of St. Margaret of Cortona and of her devotion to the holy souls. It is related in her biography that at her death she saw a multitude of souls that she had delivered from purgatory form in procession to escort her to paradise. God revealed this favor granted to Margaret of Cortona through the medium of a holy person in the city of Castello. This servant of God, wrapped in ecstasy at the moment when Margaret departed this life, saw her soul in the midst of this brilliant cortege and on Recovering from her rapture, she related to her friends what our Lord had been pleased to manifest to her. St. 
Philip Neary, founder of the Congregation of the Oratory, had a most tender devotion toward the holy souls in purgatory, and he felt a particular attraction to pray for those who had been under his spiritual direction. He considered himself under greater, greatest obligation to them because divine providence had confided them in a spiritual manner to his zeal. It seemed to him that his charity ought to follow them until their final purification was accomplished, and they were admitted into the glory of heaven. He confessed that many of his spiritual children appeared to him after their death, either to ask his prayers or to return him thanks for what he had already done for them. He declared also that by this means he had obtained more than one grace. After his death, a Franciscan father of great piety was praying in the chapel, chapel in which the venerated remains of the saint had been deposited when the latter appeared to him surrounded with glory and in the midst of a brilliant train. Encouraged by the air of amiable familiarity with which the saint regarded him, he ventured to ask the meaning of that bright band of blessed spirits which accompanied him. The saint replied that they were the souls of those whose spiritual guide he had been during life, and whom by his suffrages he had delivered from purgatory. He added that they had come to meet him on his departure from this world, that in their turn they might introduce him into heavenly Jerusalem. There is no doubt, says the devout father Resignoli, that on their entrance into eternal glory, the first favors which they ask of the divine mercy are for those who have opened to them the gates of paradise, and they will never fail to pray for their benefactors whenever they see them in necessity or danger. In reverses of fortune, sicknesses, and accidents of all kinds, they will be their protectors. Their their zeal will increase when the interests of the soul are at stake. They will powerfully assist them to vanquish temptation, to practice good works, to die a Christian death, and to escape the sufferings of the other life. Cardinal Baronius, whose authority as a historian is well known, relates that a person who was very charitable toward the holy souls, was afflicted with a terrible agony when on her deathbed. The spirit of darkness suggested to her the most gloomy fears and veiled from her sight the sweet light of divine mercy, endeavoring to drive her into despair, when suddenly heaven seemed to open before her eyes and she saw thousands of defenders fly to her aid, reanimating her courage and promising her the victory. Comforted by this unexpected assistance, she asked who were her defenders. We are, they replied, the souls which you have delivered from purgatory. We, in our turn, Come to help you, and very soon we shall conduct you to paradise. At these consoling words, the sick person felt that her fears were changed into the sweetest confidence. A short time afterwards, she tranquilly expired, her countenance serene and her heart filled with joy.